Welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create this easy Google Sheets dashboard that you can use for your athletes or clients to track whatever key metrics um, you find important. So what I'm talking about here is you can see we have two graphs and we could really make that as many as we want but in the slicer here I'm going to be able to select what athlete I want to look at and you can see depending on what athlete I choose the graphs are going to change to reflect their data and similarly I can select what dates I want to look at and you can see that the graphs change accordingly so this is gonna be a really powerful tool if you're tracking any kind of data with your clients or your athletes and it'll all live in the cloud in Google Sheets so you'll have access to it anywhere in the world so let's get after it okay so we're back and as you can see we're basically starting with the same data set that we did in the Excel version of this video but I'm going to show you how to do almost the exact same thing in Google Sheets and before we dig right into it just a quick reminder if you like these videos please like and subscribe to the channel and if you want to know when my new videos come out click the bell uh, the bell icon I believe the notification icon um, and then that'll notify you when any of the new videos come out and for the month of August I'm getting videos out every Monday and Wednesday and then sometimes Fridays as well if I have a good idea or I can get it kind of put together. So we're going to go through all of the same steps that we did for um, the Excel dashboard. So the things that we have to do is we have to kind of create the table. Um, we have to set the conditional formatting to know when we've typed in the athlete name wrong. And we have to um, create the visualizations. So Google Sheets is a little bit different than Excel in that the table functions don't work quite the same way as they do with Excel. Um, Google Sheets doesn't have a true table function so everything just sits kind of in cells and then um, you have to reference the cells, you can't reference the table. So the first thing we're going to do is put a filter on um, these cells here and then um, for all intents and purposes it's going to act very much like a table in Excel um, but it won't actually be a true table. So easy way to do it is you just highlight all of the cells that you want to put the filter on and then you go to data and you can put click uh, create a filter and what it's going to do is it's going to create a filter on here so that if I wanted to I could just filter this out to kind of any athlete that I wanted to look at and it's going to pull out all of their data in the same way that it would happen in Excel if we were using um, a table and so that's the first step kind of that we want to um, create here and you can tell where the filter is because it's highlighted um, the top columns and the rows in green okay so I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger so we can see athlete name and I should remind you that the data that we have is we have um, 15 days basically of made up bench 1RM data and squat 1RM data um, this data was all made up um, just for the purposes of these videos. So after that, what I find really um, useful in Google Sheets is actually if we apply sort of an alternating colors scheme to this. So if again, if I highlight all of these cells and then go to format, there's an option to select alternating colors. And there's different colors that you can choose on the right side. I'm gonna just leave this one gray. But what you'll notice is is as I start to type in more at the bottom, it's gonna function very much like a table does in Excel. The only difference being if I delete these um, cells here, it doesn't actually delete the alternating colors. So to do that, you just delete the row and I'm just gonna select these four rows and right click and hit delete. But um, it, it's gonna function very much like a table. One of the other differences, if we have any formulas, they're not going to automatically copy down in Google Sheets. Um, you're going to have to manually copy those down. So that's another consideration. And I'm just going to put an alternating colors over here on this little table too. So it's format and then alternating colors and I'll just make this one red just to help it stand out a little bit. And then if you remember, one of the next things we did was I want to highlight these cells if I um, type in a name wrong so that when I'm pulling out names they're all the same so if I was to type in instead of athlete one I typed in athlete and then 
um, a whole bunch of random letters by accident. I want to highlight that red so that I know that something's off. And I want to highlight that red based on a master roster, which in this case I have sitting on the same sheet um, over here under athlete name, the red box here. Okay, so then the next thing I want to do is I want to apply um, a format to this first column that if I type in the name wrong, it's actually going to highlight that out and let me know that there is an error in that formula, the same way we did in the Excel video. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select this first cell, B3, and I'm going to go to Format and then Conditional Formatting. And I want this to apply to the whole column. So I'm going to go B3 and then double dots and then B. So what that's saying is it's going to go from B3 all the way down the column of B. And then the format cells, if we're going to go scroll down to custom formula is, and we're going to type in a custom formula here. And basically what we're going to type in is equals if error. So we're checking to see if there's an error. Okay. And that's going to give it a value of true if there is an error. And what we're checking is the match formula. So we're going to look for a match in this athlete roster that we have on the right side. So we're going to go match and then quote or a bracket, open up the bracket. And we want to look in B3 and we're going to leave that reference open because we want that to change with the row. And then I'm going to type comma. And where do we want it to look? Well, in this case, our roster is in um, basically K3. And we want to be able to have the roster all the way down the, the column in K. So it's going to be K3 double dots K. But I don't want the reference to change with the row. So I'm going to lock in the K3 with the dollar sign. So I put dollar signs around the K. And then the next thing the match form they would ask you is what kind of match you want. And in this case, we're going to type in zero for exact match. So basically what's going to happen is if this finds um, a match, it's going to give me back a number. But if it doesn't find a match, um, it's going to give us back an error. Okay, so we're going to check to see if there's an error. And then if there is an error, that would be true. And we want to highlight that cell because it's true. So then the value we want if there is an error is zero and then we're going to put equals zero okay so basically what this is saying is um if if the whole thing equals zero then that is going to be true and i'm going to hit done here and so you can see what it's done is it's not finding any of these values in the roster so it's highlighting those and if i was to type in the name um, Dave, because that's not in our roster, that's going to appear um, as highlighted. But if I was to put Dave in the roster, then all of a sudden that one doesn't get highlighted anymore. Now, this might not bother you, but it bothers me that the rest of this kind of column is all highlighted. So we're going to change this rule just a little bit. So I'm going to click back into this and we're going to wrap this in an AND formula. So I'm going to type in AND and open that bracket up. So we have this whole formula, and then the last thing we're gonna look for is comma, and then it's gonna ask me, and we're gonna look for another um, value, and we're gonna put B3, and we're gonna look that it's not blank. So um, two arrows pointing towards each other signifies does not equal, and I'm gonna put double quotations to signify blank, and then close that off and hit done. And what you're going to notice is it's taken the highlights away from the blank cells. And again, if I type in kind of the wrong name, it'll highlight those as an error. So that's just a useful little kind of function if you are um, trying to figure out where in your data set things don't match sort of a master data set. So then the last piece of this puzzle is we got to create our visualizations. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a filter. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go to data and um, sorry, a slicer and I'm going to go to data and hit slicer and it's going to pull up, pull open um, this slicer and it's going to ask me what column I actually want to slice by. And in this case, we want athlete name. So in the same way that it works for Excel, I'm going to be able to select the athlete name and it's going to pull out that data. So I'm going to go back to select all. And then we're going to create some graphs off of this. So I'm going to highlight 
the date cell, and then I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna highlight the bench 1RM cell, and I'll go to insert and then chart. And it's gonna give me a histogram by default, but I'm gonna change this chart. So on the right side, it says, what chart type do you want? Let's go with a line chart. And this is bench 1RM. So I'll type in that there, and then we know that it's bench press 1RM. We don't really need to have Whoops, I deleted the whole chart, so I'll just bring that back. We know that this is bench press 1RM, so we don't really need to have the um, legend down here at the bottom. But what you can see is because um, it's displaying both um, athletes right now, there's this awkward value where it kind of comes across. But if we were to select only one athlete on the filter, you're going to see we have a nice kind of line here. So I'll select everybody, and let's just... Um, clean this up a little bit. Where did it send my chart? Where did that go? Okay, so all I did was kind of paste it back in. It was being funky and was kind of taking away the chart. So the next thing we're going to do with this chart is um, I'm just going to add in the series, I'm going to add kind of a point. So we'll make it kind of seven points and we'll give it a circle and that just kind of makes it look a little bit nicer. So then I'm going to take these two items. So I'm going to hold control and hit copy, control C, and I'm gonna bring those over to a master sheet and paste those on. And what you'll notice is um, Google Sheets has got this function where you can actually snap it right so that it's in line with stuff, but the chart will still function as normal. So I'll be able to kind of select either athlete from here and see their chart. And then I'm gonna copy this chart, control C, control V, and it's gonna paste one down here for me and I'll put this up in line with the other chart. And I'm gonna make this the squat RM. So let's change the title and then we'll change the series. Okay, so um, we gotta to go to setup and it's gonna ask me on the right hand side to add a series and you can search or I can click the select data range. I'm gonna collect the select data range and then go back to the data and I'm gonna select the whole column where the squat data is and hit okay. And it's gonna add the squat in there and I'll just remove the bench. I'll just right click there and remove the bench. So you can see now we have our squat RM data in there. And if we select our athlete, it's gonna give us both of our values. And you can tell that one's a squat and one's a bench because this is in the 400 range and this is in the 200 range. Now the last piece is we could do the same thing with our filter and I can control C, control V the filter and open it up and instead of um, athlete name we just put one to date and now all of a sudden we can select different dates that we want um, to be able to visualize. So I'll select all and then it kind of brings it back. So you can see how kind of powerful this can become really fast and just using some simple charts and slicers, you can have a little dashboard rigged up in kind of a matter of minutes that you can start using to track data that you're looking at. So I hope this trick helps you out. And if you're finding any value in these videos, it would be awesome if you could like the video and share it with some more people um, to help get the word out there and help some more coaches with some sort of easy data management and some easy visualizations. Quick reminder, if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to um, fill out the form in the description below. And if I end up creating the video from the suggestion that you give me, I will send you the sheet for free. So it's a good way to have me solve your problem. So I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.